Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady channel. In today's video, we discuss whether the economy is looking good or bad. Where are prices actually headed? We'll be providing more information about it shortly. However, tomorrow appears crucial as the SEC will submit its response to the opposition filed by Ripple's event the matter now rests in the hands of the court for a ruling. Right? It shouldn't take too long for her to decide whether or not to deny the request. Right. That, in turn, may serve as the impetus for a settlement, as predicted by David Schwartz. Right. Alternatively, she thinks it will be refused if the night men are wrong about it being allowed in part and the SEC only gets 10 days to file and appeal to the Court of Appeals. Right? Of course, the SEC could pull a rabbit out of the hat and approve some crazy settlements that would have XRP Productions and Brad Garland's house doing jello shots at the after party. 99, so, there you have it. This situation is developing rapidly, so please pay carefully. Now. However, we should discuss the economy. For the first time since the 2008 financial crisis, American consumers are failing on their credit cards and vehicle loans due to unforeseen circumstances. The situation is obviously really dire at this point, right? What will he do while the market sees all these forms of news guys? This isn't even a fan of hilarious matter. Rally to greater heights since we now inhabit a world that has been turned upside down. Right? Right now, Bad news is good news because the market understands that the Fed must pump the markets or risk a collapse. What will they choose to do then? The answer is obvious, guys, pump. They're stalling for time or kicking the can down the road, as the saying goes. However, when the true states have things hit markets correctly, the essential soft landing will be a Black Monday level disaster. When will they, though, is the real question now. My guess is that it will be. There are. Then, two points to make. Either a black swan is on the horizon, guys, or they're just going to delay it till the collapse. Right? And here we are. This is really insane, a politician is betting against the US economy. In a short, QQ index trade on August 23rd, Senator Thomas Carper purchased 45,000 in USP. He also admitted to closing USP shores for a gain of 6.5% in a month, suggesting that he is actively trading and hedging the NACS economy. Therefore, there is widespread insider trading. We can tell what issues are most pressing because politicians and other powerful men never miss an episode of short sale or hedged bets or inside trade or whatever else may have to do with the economy. This is his second short slash hedge in a rather stable economy this year. Right? What's the one telltale sign that the end of the world is imminent? Nor a black swan, nor any of that nonsense, I'm talking about the collapse, here. For NACS Congress, this is the one and only important indicator that senators suggested suspending stock exchanges on July 25th. When the band bans literally all these politicians, as some senators have proposed banning sock tracing for U.S. Congress people, that's it. Right? For the simple reason that they won't be shopping there. Assuming that everybody is broke. They'll be set free when the Grim Reaper arrives to collect everyone's possessions and souls. If they don't want to lose their money, they'll make a hasty exit at the correct time, right guys? They'd rather not risk becoming financially unstable even though everyone else does. Thus, they will take measures to ensure their safety. We need to keep an eye out for this one crucial indicator. Also, be cautious. Not that everything is looking up, fellas, but maybe it is. It's possible they're male. Listen to me, boys. They're going to try to fool everyone into thinking we're joking for as long as possible. Nonetheless, we are not. Because of this, Justin for the month of October, Japan is planning an economic stimulus package. And what is this, exactly? We're not even halfway to 2020, and these folks are already reintroducing stimulus legislation. Right. Check this out. 
Read on to learn about the point of the economic stimulus plan. When do we see this? Measures to stimulate company investment in cutting-edge industries and increase worker remuneration are anticipated to be included in the package. Canada's new capitalism program provided inspiration for these policies, which attempt to establish a virtuous cycle of growth and distribution by ensuring that pay growth continues to outperform inflation. Right? Once again, it appears that things are improving, which is great news for investors just as the economy is about to take a nosedive. To where are they off to? Why are they doing this, exactly? Means to force or crowd out individuals. Right? Is it time to start the global printer? Guys, give this some thought. They have the power to bring it crashing down at any moment. Right? What does that make them then? Looking to stimulate the economy, perhaps? What's the funniest thing about the Polish Central Bank's recent 75 basis point interest rate cut? To each his own, I guess. Right? That settles it. The inflation rate in Poland is still over 10%, by the way. Due to political pressure ahead of Poland's upcoming elections next month, the reduction was only 5 basis points. They have already implemented significant rate reductions. Right. Inflation is still over 10% there, by the way. But now they're decreasing prices. The heck is that? This is a flip top verse, guys. Right. The sky seems to be falling. However, I'm guessing what the call is. They want to improve the economy quickly so that it can't hurt the guys. Poland, please enjoy your stay in the European depression. Keep in mind that a recession has set in if the central bank has to decrease interest rates. Wow. He's yelling because he knows that nearly everyone thinks that falling. Interest rates are good news. This is obviously a bad thing. People. The right to be insane does not exist. They were trapped. The Bank of Canada still has its key rate beliefs door open for potential future hikes. Right? This is too unbelievable to be true. All the central bankers have paused or reduced their activities. Right? The next step is. Where is the USA at with Jerome Powell? Just a moment while we discuss this matter. It doesn't look like 2017 is the year for the collapse, so they'll just keep kicking the can down the road. Right? It's possible that anything like a black swan may happen. They'll step in at that point, saving the day. But if that doesn't happen, guys, they're going to keep pushing the market higher and higher until it simply can't go much higher. It's finally at the breaking point. That's when it starts to fall apart because it's not sustainable. Literally. The Bank of Canada has decided to maintain the status quo with respect to his benchmark interest rate. While some economists believe the current tightening cycle has reached its apex, the president has warned that further increases may be necessary to curb high or persistent inflation. Wow. However, if necessary, higher policy interest rates should be implemented, since the Federal Reserve might be calling at this point to warn that current rates are likely already at or near their maximum safe range. To repeat, they simply cannot keep increasing the interest rates indefinitely. If it happens, chaos will ensue. Take a look at what transpired in March of this year. The banking system was breaking down and failing. The larger ones, too. We're gobbling them up, people, you see how we're consolidating. This leaves the Fed in a bind. Right? They had ran out of options. Just what are they going to do? This is probably a different race. I can't say. But guys, sooner or later, they have to stop. Literally. They have to write for school. Yes, but we won't be discounting any time. Soon. But I've come, according to what I've read, the numbers come straight from the charts. When they cut rates or interest rates, that's when the markets peak, men. Right. That they continue to hold cause for the market to rally may therefore be a good thing. Right. Isn't it fascinating that August was the busiest month ever in bankruptcy court for Macy's? 
Bloomberg reports that $238 billion in corporate bonds and loans are currently selling at a distressed aid in an ace. 23 major bankruptcies were filed over the entire month of August. Only in the past week. Six significant companies filed for bankruptcy, costing creditors $3.1 billion. Large numbers of people are declaring bankruptcy right now. Right. Since interest rates are so high, that's why. Insolvency filings have reached crisis levels not seen since the early 1900s. And the current economic catastrophe to what does that point? Right? Guys, we're almost there. Right? That a spike did spiked for a while are those throughout the recession, and this happened in 2020, precisely when the value of assets began to fall precipitously. If these things happen, it suggests the markets will crash because of a black swan event. The clapping will happen, but only if they can put it off for another two years, right, guys? However, it cannot possibly appear good throughout any and all visits. The FDIC warns that rising inflation and interest rates pose a threat, but banks are robust for several reasons. Right now, in front of your very eyes, they are actively working to alter the story being told. They are attempting to alter the story in light of the Fed's expectations. A moment of reflection could be in order. If you keep raising interest rates like crazy, your banking system will crash. Right? The banking industry, while perhaps more durable than what they see right here, is nonetheless displaying indications of stress. Really? Oh my goodness! Where is it insured, by the FDIC? What 250k, I take it, you wish to get your money out of these banks or remove your assets from fiat currency. But Jim Rickards said that if you have more than you should have even if the banks don't, less than $250,000, you should find a method to get it. Because if the banks fail, your money is gone forever, right? But I do think a rally needs to go up in the end, so it looks like we're nearing the conclusion. According to JP Morgan, a crisis is more likely to occur in the next 6 to 12 months than the market currently assumes, and its severity may be greater than the dangers associated with an interest rate shock or the impact of clear consumer credit funding for startups on joblessness. It's all right here in front of our eyes, men, even JP Morgan is sounding the alarm that the end of the world is coming in the next 6 to 12 months. What a fascinating revelation. That corresponds to what in 2425. Right. Perhaps this explains why central banks bought an additional 55 tons of gold in July, another month of buying in anticipation of an economic catastrophe. Since everyone will be selling their possessions to the UFC, I imagine that the dollar will also be worthless. Which is exactly what I'll be doing, guys. That means I'll lose a lot of money and stuff, right? We'll see this happen at some point, these are the sizes they're describing to you beforehand. Everything you saw in the sea of red in 2020 will happen again, only 9 times worse. Let's wait and see what the future holds. However, no business sages. I think we need to pump, and the clapping will stop at some point. It was incredible, though. That's all, folks. Please leave a like and subscribe. See you soon, bye.